Most of the stories are fucking true. <laughs> so, let's get that out of the way right away. If you hear a story about the pomp room, you can't believe it. It's true. People were buying cases of beer at a time at the bar. Hey, my only arrest is because of the pomp room. Packing 10,000 people in there, you know, you can't move. There was no flat surface in the entire bar that didn't have an empty on it because the, the staff just gave up trying to clean it up. You can't make up the shit that went on down there. Pretty positive people were just peeing on the floor where they stood because there was no way they could get to the bathroom. What the hell did you do to my mom? <laughs> <laughs> you I enjoyed my job way, way too much. Have you ever been kicked in the ball by a small calf? That's about where I'm at. Ma would lay him on the ground and sit on him, out in front of the bar waiting for the cops. I finally seen him when I caught him. Shut up. <laughs> Drug him over to the stairs and I chucked his ass down the stairs. So I believe that happened a couple of times. Oh. <laughs> no logic. Oh shit, I might have actually kill somebody. No reason. Walked back where the dressing area was. And no consequence. Picked him up by the throat and explained to him that he'd have a wonderful job managing a McDonald's if I squeeze. That was the conference. Yeah, that guy in the skirt, I don't know about him, but god damn, we have a lot of fun when he's here. And all of a sudden, one of them grabs his beer bottle and cranks up and smokes the other guy right here in the head with it. Glass busts everywhere. The dude goes, whoo, doesn't go down. Stands up, picks up his chair and goes, wow, <laughs> he won. The fire marshal came up and said, we're, we're shutting it down because I think it was double capacity, if I remember correctly. The rain lights a Roman candle on stage. I'm on fire. I'm on fucking fire! The strangest melting pot of weirdos that you're ever going to see. It was like the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> something was smoking, something wasn't turned on. So. You walk in, you stick to the carpet on your shoes. I'd be, it'd be so smoky in there. I mean, your guitar cases stunk, everything. I remember one time we drove up to Load Equipment Inn. There was like, I don't know, 30 bikes, you know. And I'm going, okay, what kind of place are we playing at? Two days before the show, I get a call. Those guys are bringing their own opening band. You guys are off the bill. Rock and roll's a bitch when he hangs up. And I'm like, okay. A lot of groping, gripping, grasping, flirting, honking, sweating. And that was just the band. It's like being in a sauna most nights. <laughs> the best musicians in the world showing up to play there. I knew it was a magical time and I knew that it wasn't going to last forever. It was tragic. That probably was the pinnacle of the explosion. And it's not for anything that the bar did wrong. It's from some asshole pulling a knife on somebody outside the bar. The building had a soul of its own. You walked in and you felt it. It was, it was what rock and roll really is. That was the club, you know. That was, that was rock and roll back then. It was, it was different. We were lucky enough to have a playground like the Pomper. And that's what it was. It was a playground for musicians. We were treated like family. Even though the genres of music changed over the years, the type of clientele changed over the years, the one thing that never left was that family feeling. It was a dive. It was a dump. You know, was it a beautiful place? Absolutely not. But it was beautiful to us. It just, there, there will never be another one. We all had tears in our eyes because that summed it up and we were all going to miss it a lot. It was a family experience. It was loud, ugly, not going away. It was, it was the pomp room. It was an uh, entity of its own.